I don't know about you all, but I could use some good news. And I am excited to share some good news today with you all. Um, as a church, we entered into a project in December that we call the 24 Days of Christmas. And I want to share some of the results of that. Um, as I watched you walk in with your boxes loaded with canned goods, cereal, um, paper plates, paper towels, hand warmers, hot chocolate, um, it was a joy to receive that from you all. Well, this last week we delivered those items and it was so fun to take two carloads to the Food Pantry Network knowing that your generosity was going to benefit families um, coming into at least 15 different food pantries in our community. So you have blessed the people of Licking County with food. And I can tell you that um, throughout this year, the need has been that much more so. And to partner with the Food Pantry Network in ensuring that no one goes hungry in Licking County has been a blessing for us as a church. So thank you, church, for just being so kind and generous in this season. Well, that wasn't the only place that we got to bless this season. Um, we also partnered with um, the Boys and Girls Club of Newark, and we took paper plates, um, napkins, towels, um, and probably the most fun item on our whole list, which was Play-Doh, um, to them as they support families by allowing children to come in for after-school programs. Um, this is a hot commodity and it is so fun. So not only did you bless them with um, just your generosity, but also joy. Um, who doesn't have fun with Play-Doh these days? So thank you for that. They were so grateful when we dropped those items off. And then finally we took items to the um, the outreach ministry at Vertical 196. And they are an outreach ministry to those who are struggling with homelessness. And as we took blankets and hand warmers and hot chocolate and gift cards, etc., cetera, um, they received them with so much joy. And I am just overwhelmed by your generosity. So thank you for um, being kind to those um, in need this season. I know that this has been um, a hard year for all of us. And I am just overwhelmed by how you have turned from looking inward to looking outward in order to bless others. So thank you, church, for doing that. Um, and in some of our conversations with those organizations, um, we learned that Vertical 196 um, is no, no longer accepting clothes at this point. They're, they're maxed out with their storage, but they can continue to use blankets. So I want us as a church to commit to giving them 100 blankets by February 7th. Um, so I encourage you to dig around in your homes, look for those gently used blankets, maybe even go um, grab a new one. And we want to deliver those to Vertical 196 in February. Um, I'd love for you to have those to church by February 7th. I'll let you know some additional dates where you could drop those off. But right now your task is to dig those out um, so that we can um, help those who are struggling with homelessness in this season as we go into some of the coldest winter months um, in the next few weeks. Um, we want to be able to support their ministry there. Um, so I want us to continue to share hope with others this season. Um, I'm looking forward to being able to report that final organization that we supported through the 24 days, um, the Susana Wesley School in Anapra, Mexico. We're still um, tallying up and receiving some of those monetary gifts. So I'm looking forward to reporting that to you in the next week. But I wanted to share some good news. Um, we all need hope in this season. Um, and you have inspired me with your generosity. So thank you, Church of the Mall. morning. Welcome to Church in the Mall. Welcome home. Uh, here I am at the gravesite of Walter and Vi Forsyth. These were my grandparents. 
it's funny that uh, Violet Forsyth, my grandmother, actually prophesied over me when I was a young boy in middle school, maybe at the beginning of high school, saying that that man will one day be a pastor. And here I am many years later, a pastor. But you know, it also reminds me of this wonderful story in which John Wesley was preaching to a group of people. And he infuriated them. They were so upset with his preaching that they actually kicked him out of the church. He actually went outside on the church grounds and stood on the grave of his father. You see, that grave belongs to the family. And they couldn't kick him off. And he stood there preaching the word of God in such a way that the power of God moved through the crowd of people. And it says that 3,000 were slain in the spirit that day. Now, John Wesley looked around and he couldn't believe what had happened other than it was a miraculous encounter with the living God. And so when I think of all the turmoil going on in the world, who couldn't use a miraculous encounter with the living God? Well, today we're going to do just that. We're going to have an encounter with the risen God through the Gospel of John. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to go ahead and turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Look, I want to first start off by saying when we look at the Gospels, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, then John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are actually the synoptic Gospels, and synoptic simply means to see with one eye. In other words, to build upon one another's stories and to capture a lot of the same material, but perhaps with a different point of view. But John, however, captures a whole bunch of new things, things that we're not even privy to until John enlightens us to the stories and the happenings of Jesus. In fact, where all the other Gospels begin with the birth of Jesus, John does not. In fact, what John does is really quite exciting. He actually alludes or takes us back to the story of Genesis and creation. And in the beginning, it says God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the earth. And then God said, let there be light. And all of a sudden, darkness seems to flee from this glowing orb of light, which stands for righteousness and goodness. That is the presence of God. You see, it won't be until days later that God will create the stars and the moon and and the sun and, and things in which we can tell the date and times. But for us, the glory and radiant power of God is what ignites and lights the universe. And it's the very voice of God that speaks creation into being. In fact, it's as if we get an image of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit working together in creation. The Father speaking things into existence. The Son forming things with His power and touch. And the Holy Spirit sustaining such things for life. And in the same way we see a relationship with God unfold as the Father invites or calls us into relationship through the Son who makes a way through His own sacrifice. And then we are empowered through the Holy Spirit to commune with God, to actually tabernacle or to make our tents with God, to take our place in God's family. This is exactly what the ancients believed and and understood about the person of God. And it's John who begins to capture those very ideas and opens his gospel with such famous words as these. Before time itself was measured, the voice was speaking. That is the voice of God. The the very voice that the Jews looked for to hear God speaking creation. It's also the voice that the Greeks and the Romans looked at to create wisdom and, and peace and parallel within this universe, that all things seem to work together with a purpose and intent. Where does this voice come from? Well, John continues by saying, the voice was and is God. This sexual word remains ever present with the Creator. His speech shaped the entire cosmos. Immersed in the practice of creating, all things that exist were birthed in Him. John opens his gospel with a reminder that we are all created and we live in an environment that is entirely created by God for his pleasure and glory. Isn't it interesting to think that you and I were made for God's pleasure? Not to be toyed with or played with, but simply that he delights in you and me just by being who we are, his creation. Well, John doesn't stop there. Listen to the next section, he says. 
His, or God's breath, filled all things with a living, breathing light, a light that thrives in the depth of darkness, blazes through murky bottoms. It cannot and will not be quenched. You know, this is why when people pass from one world to the next and, and they die in this world, people will use terms like, oh, the light has left their eyes, or the light has gone out. Uh, Elton John sings a song, A Candle in the Wind, and how it blows out. It's this very idea that God's living, thriving, radiant glory, His light, has shone into people and created us in the most incredible way in His image. Now, John is talking about how this voice has been there from the very beginning, that this Savior, this person of Jesus Christ, the, the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, has been there from the very beginning. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so it's evident to John that in the midst of all of our seeking, whether we're looking for the great wisdom or looking to be a part of something bigger than who and what we are, we can find it in this celestial voice of God, in the person of Jesus, the Logos, the wisdom that has always existed since before the world began. Now, John will go on and continue to tell a story about another John, John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus who was born to Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, and the one that was actually sent to be a prophet. Now, listen to what happens in verse 6. It says, A man named John who was sent by God was the first to clearly articulate the source of this light. He was the one who understood that this was, in fact, God, that the Savior had come into the world. This baptizer put in plain words the elusive mystery of the divine light so all might believe through him that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, some wondered whether he might be the light. You know, is John the one that God's talking about or is there someone else? But, as John says, John was not the light. He merely pointed to the light, the true light, the light that shines upon the heart of everyone, was coming now into the cosmos to become one in humanity. He entered our world, speaking of Jesus, a world that he had made, yet the world did not recognize him. Even though he came to his own people, they refused to listen and receive him. But for all who did receive and trust in him, he gave them the right to be reborn as children of God. He, Jesus, bestowed this birthright not only in human power or initiative, but by God's divine will. The voice took on flesh and became human and chose to live alongside us. We have seen him enveloped in undeniable splendor, the one true Son of the Father, evidenced in the perfect balance of grace and truth. John the Baptist testified about him and shouted, This is the one I've been telling you that is coming. He's much greater than I because he existed long before me. Though this man, we all receive gifts of grace beyond our imagination. Listen, you see, Moses gave us rules, and the, but Jesus has come and offered us the gift of grace and truth. God, unseen until now, is revealed in this mystical voice. God's only Son, straight from the Father's heart. You know, to John, it is no mistake that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who has come to rescue the world. You know, in Jewish philosophy and thought, it was always believed that God would one day set the world right, that His holiness would bring a renewing and a healing and a wholeness to a broken world, that His people would no longer be lost or outcast, but they'd be united and brought home as one nation, one people, one family, under God and in God. Here John is reminding us that that promise is made full in the person of Jesus Christ. Oh, my friends, as we begin to study the Gospel of John, our lives are going to become so meaningful as we begin to grapple with the reality that you and I were created for a purpose, to be loved by God, and that there's nothing we have to do other than just be who we are. But John encourages us to not only recognize Jesus as the Word, but to learn about Him, to experience life with Him and alongside of Him. And so the stories John captures all illustrate the idea of this light and this love and this redemption that has come into the world. Over the next few weeks, we're going to study this as we lead our way into the series of Lent and as we prepare our hearts and our minds to experience what it is that God has in store for us. 
Even though it feels like our world may be on fire and upside down, we have a God who is in control of all things. A God who somehow, even in the midst of evil, takes that evil, although he didn't create it, and he works it for his good and his purpose. This is our opportunity to grow and see what God has in store for us. I hope you're going to join me on this journey because this is going to be an incredible time for us to grow as people. On our website, you're going to find that there's a plan for reading. In fact, I'll include it on a slide at the end of this message. There's also an opportunity in which you can spend time with God each day reading the Word. Now, it doesn't have to take a lot. We're talking about maybe five minutes a day. If you can spend more, I promise it'll bless you. But what I have found is when my life feels out of control, when I feel off kilter, it's because I am not spending time with God. When I do, all of a sudden my mind and my heart and my whole spirit begin to align with the reality that God is in control of all things, that He has set this world in motion and that He will be the one who comes to heal and restore and set it free and right. That He's the one who brings me peace because I know who I am in Jesus Christ. I'm a child of the living God, and nothing can take that away. Nothing can change that. So as you begin this journey this week, here's my challenge to you. I want you to find your Bible. I want you to go to the Gospel of John, and I want you to begin reading. I want you to take a look at our reading schedule, and I want you to devote time each day to be in the Word of God. Let's try this for a few months. See if this doesn't change your life. I promise for those who stick with it, you will become enlightened to the richness of who God is through the person of Jesus Christ as told by John in the Gospels. And you will find a healing and wholeness in your own life. The scriptures never come back void. So let's test and see if God is indeed good in this. For some of you, I would recommend getting a journal or something you can write in. Write down your thoughts or scripture verses that stand out. These are things for you to meditate or to think about, maybe even pray about as you go throughout your day and your weeks. But together, we're going to experience God, the risen God in our lives. So come, let us draw near to God, not so much in his presence, but as the ancients would say, face to face. I promise you will not be disappointed. Get your Bibles, get your journals, grab that reading plan and begin reading along with us. I pray that God will bless you greatly. In fact, let's close with that prayer. Lord, as we have spent time learning about your word today and being reminded that you are the God of the cosmos, the one who created all things, the one who knit us together and knew us, even every hair on our head. Father, the one that called us into existence for the sole purpose of your pleasure, that we might know you. You provided an opportunity with your son that we might be restored, renewed, and fully engulfed in your love. Lord, as we embark on this journey, may we not feel guilt or shame if we miss a day, but may we look forward to those times where we get to read the Word of God and be face-to-face with our Creator. God, would you come and speak into our minds and our hearts, into our very lives, that no matter what is happening around us, we can be in tune with you and that you would become our peace. Jesus, I pray this in the holy name of God, not only for myself and my family, but for all those who watch this video, that in the name of Jesus, they might come alive through your word. Lord, come now and speak to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, don't forget to check out that reading plan on our website, www.churchinthemall.com, and it'll be on a slide right after this video. Go in God's name, be blessed, and I look forward to seeing what God will teach you through the very word of God. Go in peace.